So why is Portland, Oregon a dying city? Many theories float around the internet as to what happened, who's to blame, and what needs to be fixed. I live in the Portland, Oregon metro area and I spend a lot of time in downtown Portland. I've lived here for almost 13 years and I can tell you that if this ain't a dying city, I don't know what is. Is there hope for the Rose City? Can Portland turn it around? I think so. Will it happen in the next year? I doubt it. That's a hill I think will take close to a decade to climb. Today's list is about 10 things that are bringing Portland down and what needs to be fixed. A few of the things on this list sort of bleed into or overlap each other, but I think they're all worthy of their own spot. Now I'm sure some of you will disagree with what's on the list and some of you will disagree with the order that they show up. And I'm sure some of you will disagree with what needs to be done. And that's great. I would love to hear about it in the comment section. I'd also like to know if there's a city you'd like to have done next. Get it, got it, good. Let's take a look. Number 10, rising rent prices. So up until 2019, Portland didn't have any form of rent control. And this made rent prices way higher than I think they should be. I think most people think that unless you're a landlord, then you're perfectly fine with it. But most people agree that up until 2019 and even today, rent prices are too high. That's how it used to be. Rent prices could be raised any dollar amount they want at any time. Of course, after a lease, if you had a lease, they kind of had to stay that way legally. But once you're out of a lease and if you were going month to month, they could just keep raising your rent. Oregonians used to just blame Californians when in reality it was kind of the laws we had in place or lack of laws that let them put it at whatever they wanted. Currently, there's a few companies that are going through some legal troubles because of rent fixing They had an algorithm that kind of artificially inflated rent prices. When it comes to fixing this problem, I think the steps they've made have helped. It'll take a few years before we really start seeing the effect. So that one sort of, it still sucks, but let's see. Number nine, rising violent crime. When I first moved to Portland, Oregon, the crime rate was pretty decent and their violent crime rate was below the national average, which is outstanding. It's not a major city, it's considered a medium city, but to have a violent crime rate that's below the national average for a city, that's outstanding. In the almost 13 years I've been here, there's been a change. And in the last three years, it's been a big change. The violent crime rate in 2018 was 2% below the national average which is respectable. Keep in mind, like I always say, there are cities like East St. Louis and Detroit in this country where the violent crime rate can be two and 300% above the national average. So a couple percentage points below the national average is not bad. Here in 2022, it is 35% above the national average. That's just the violent crime rate. Their overall crime is 124% above the national average and their property crime, that's at 142% above the national average. When 2022 is over, I'm sure it'll be closer to 45% above the national average for the violent crime rate. So something needs to be done. And don't leave in the comment section that we shouldn't have defunded our police. Oregon and Portland never defunded any police. Some cities in the country have taken, let's say, money from buying more military style equipment and put some of that money into training their officers for mental health crises and stuff like that. It's not funding. They're just shifting some of the money around. What Portland needs to do is crack down on some of the neighborhoods that are kind of out of control. Now, I mean, out of control for the Pacific Northwest, not Southside Chicago out of control. It's a proven strategy. Once the police start focusing on a neighborhood, crime will go down. So basically, they do need a little more manpower. Of course, that takes money, which means more taxes or cutting back other places. And then as you'll learn on number one on this list, the tax base is being affected. Number eight, the housing shortage. It's estimated that the Portland, Oregon metro area needs about 100,000 more housing units, whether it's apartments, condos, houses, whatever. Now, 100,000 is the over-dramatized numbers that you might get from some organization that has some unrealistic views of the present, but really they're thinking about the future. 100,000 should be great, but realistically what they need now is about 25,000 housing units. Since they don't have enough houses, this of course means there's higher rent and there's higher home prices. When landlords and homeowners are in competition to get your dollar to rent or buy, prices go down. But with the serious housing shortage that's been going on for about a decade, it just creates more problems. 
I mean, almost everything on this list and any bad thing with a city, town, state, whatever, creates other problems, not just one problem. There's always a spider web of problems that happen whenever anything is bad. Number seven, it's no longer a walkable city. Downtown Portland, Oregon used to be a very walkable city. You could walk anywhere, have a good time, just walk around downtown. And it was really nice. Now with the crime rate the way it is and other problems they have downtown, it's definitely not a walkable city. I mean, people still do. It's just not as comfortable as it used to be. And I think a lot fewer people are out walking around, let's say, at night than used to be. When I first got here, it was great. People seeing shows, walking to restaurants, walking to bars. Now everyone gets in their car or an Uber and gets out of there as soon as they're done doing whatever they were doing. There used to be a comfortable vibe downtown Portland, Oregon that just isn't there anymore. You're always on guard. Number six, mass transit hasn't recovered. The ridership for our mass transit here, which is known as the MAX, or TriMet, has been down. Look at this chart. Since the pandemic hit, it dropped like all places. It just hasn't recovered. Not as many people are going downtown for work, but just more people are choosing to drive downtown instead of taking the train. This, of course, has caused more traffic. In the last four or five years, more people have started to work at home. So there should be less cars on the road during the heaviest commute times, you know, before work and after work. Rush hours should have kind of mellowed out. No, that ain't happening. I would say, just my guesstimate, it's actually worse now than it was before the pandemic. Rush hour sucks in Portland and it's just getting worse. And people not riding the train is part of the problem. In my opinion, it's a big part of the problem. Number five, our weirdness is now a liability. Portland, Oregon is known for being kind of weird. Originally, that weirdness came from the artist types that we had here, the musicians, the young people that live downtown. That's how it got that kind of saying, keep Portland weird. Now it's being attributed to all the people that are suffering from mental health problems that are living on the street. Then you have the political climate in the United States, and that's one of the first things they go to. Oh, they're keeping it weird in Portland. They've got this problem and this problem, and it's a failed state and all that other stuff that they say whenever they're talking about politics. That always seems to be one that's brought up, keep Portland weird. And it's not the artists anymore they're talking about are the people on the street that are suffering from severe mental illness. So instead of having, you know, a cool vibe or a funny saying, keep Portland weird, now it's become kind of a slur in a way. Not sure what's going on over there over my shoulder, but it looks like he's falling asleep on his hands and knees. Number four. It's dirty. That's right, downtown Portland, Oregon is a dirty place. There's a few different reasons for this. The city has bigger problems to take care of than cleaning up the streets. It's dirty in a lot of different ways, and I think number one on this will shed some light on why it is so dirty. There's so many different issues, a lot of them we've named here, going on downtown Portland, that this is like an afterthought for the city, you know, cleaning up streets, getting paper off the streets. It's just not how it used to be. It used to be a very clean city. Now there's graffiti places that I never saw it before. There's just trash in the streets wherever you look. It seems to me if anything's getting cleaned out on the sidewalk, it's whatever business owner or whatever company happens to own the building where that sidewalk or curb is, that's who's cleaning it a lot of the times. Downtown near Pioneer Plaza or Pioneer Square, they have these really cool like bronze statues of like a trout, family of deers, some beavers, some bears, things like that. And they're really cool and they're all around and they're in these like little fountains. I walked by the other day, the fountains were, I would say, half full of trash. Like someone decided these were no longer fountains. There's no water in them right now, but someone decided that this is where they should put their trash. And then everyone started putting their trash there. And it was kind of sad. It made me kind of upset. Now, if you go up by the college, that's a little bit different. You know, it's a little cleaner. And I think a lot of that has to do with the colleges cleaning up things around there. But most of the downtown area and especially in the Chinatown area, it's pretty gross. Number three. Downtown at night sucks. It didn't used to. Like I was saying earlier, people used to hang out down there. You go to different bars, go to the different clubs, see a movie, see a concert, and then you'd hang out downtown. A lot of the businesses have gone away that used to cater to that crowd. 
a lot of the bars and a lot of the really cool pubs are no longer there. One of the best comedy clubs on the West Coast, Harvey's, they shut their doors. Now, I'm sure some of that had to do with COVID, but I think COVID was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. The area around Harvey's, it absolutely sucked. It didn't used to. It's another situation where I've said that a lot. It didn't used to. It actually used to be okay. Now it freaking blows. They have an old school retro arcade, like from the 80s. It's called Ground Control, which is in the Old Town area or Chinatown area of Portland. I haven't been there in like four years. I love the place. It's so cool. It's a bar. It's a restaurant. It has like real Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, and games like that. Space Invaders. I played Space Invaders there, and it's like the original cabinet. I want Old Town Portland to be better just so I can go to ground control. Number two, Civic Pride is dead. It used to be kind of a cool thing to live in Portland, Oregon. You kind of took a little pride in it. I mean, that's why so many people were irritated. Californians were moving up here because they love their city. Their city was the king. These days, you talk to someone, they don't tell you they're from Portland. They kind of hide it. There used to be this overwhelming vibe of, you know, this is a great city. If you don't live here, you just don't know. You're not cool. To use the old phrase from the 1960s, if you didn't live in Portland, you were kind of a square. That's how they acted here. I mean, it was cool to live in Portland. That's not a thing anymore. It's like the hipsters left town and that was it. All right, before we get to number one, if you're planning on moving to another city, another state, there's a link for a website called Home and Money. I've teamed up with them. If you're looking for a real estate agent, they'll help you get in contact with one anywhere in the nation. Their website has all kinds of neat tools too, if you're thinking about buying a house. All right, on to number one. And number one, the sidewalk camps. Now, Portland has a homeless situation, just like most major cities in the United States. On the West Coast, it's obviously worse. California has more homeless than all the other states combined. Portland's no slouch, either is Seattle. And that's, I mean, that's horrible, and those people need help. And I'm all on board with helping them. I think more help needs to be given to these people, help get them off the street, help them get their life back together, rehab, whatever their situation might be. The part of that situation that's killing the city is the homeless camps on the sidewalk. They are on every street, in front of businesses, in front of apartment buildings, anywhere you go downtown, you will find tents. Now, in recent weeks, they've been trying to clean that up. But a lot of damage has been done to Portland because of those camps. They let them go on too long. Now, everyone has a right to do whatever they can to survive, in my opinion. I mean, as long as it's not affecting other people. This is affecting other people. There's businesses that are closing up shop, maybe moving elsewhere. So it's just this snowball effect. They've been cleaning it up, like I'd said, over the last month, month and a half or so. I'm actually working on a video with it. I've been going down like every couple weeks to film this one area to see how it's looking. But the thing is, they've been cleaning it up. And if you walk all the way around any block, I guarantee you're going to see a few tents on the sidewalk. Three months ago, six months ago, you'd probably see 15 tents on the sidewalk on that block. They are setting up these safe camp areas where people could do that and get them away from the businesses. It's not a perfect solution, but it's something. If they fix that situation, most of the things on this list will fix themselves. It won't be as dirty. The nightlife down there might be decent again. You'll be able to walk downtown. And maybe, just maybe, Civic Pride will return to Portland, Oregon. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.